in a world and time when so much is changing, there is still so much of our culture that has to be documented and kept alive. Who are the bearers of these precious living cultures? How do they pass on a knowledge transmitted through the ages? What they represent has survived colonization, conflict, marginalization, and yet they persist. Sila ang sisidlan, the living vessels that store dayaw, our knowledge, our pride. In the past three episodes of Dayao Season 4, we've met the culture bearers, the Gawad Manlilikhanang Bayan Awardees, 13 individuals who steadfastly clung to the highest standards of their culture and artistic traditions. Sisidlan is a word that best describes these vessels of tradition. In this episode, we look at other vessels, men and women who have chosen to study, record, document, and teach these artistic traditions to a greater public. The field that they have chosen is Filipino folk dance and performance. It is a difficult mission that they have chosen, but you will experience for yourselves their passion, their dedication, their all-consuming love for this aspect of our culture. Who are the vessels who have borne the dances of our indigenous peoples and brought them to the cities and urban centers? Teaching them to students and professionals. Our survey includes the performing groups that have been founded by the late national artist Ramon Arevalo Obusan, Francisca Reyes Aquino, and Lucrezia Reyes Urtula. Add to these visionaries the names of folk dance stalwarts Cora Inigo and Ligaya Amilbangsa. But their story is also the story of many young Filipinos who have chosen to go against the grain of popular culture. To learn about and yes, to keep alive the dances, rituals, chants, and even the philosophies of our indigenous peoples. And yet the question must be asked, in the transference of knowledge, in the translation of actual ritual into staged performance, is a true spirit lost? In a community, people perform for themselves. They do not perform for an audience. Otherwise, everybody, in a way, is a participant. And this is the nature of uh, the dancers in our community. For example, if you have a village ritual, the village ritual will involve dancing. The Subli of Batangas, uh, this is uh, done during, well, May, in honor of, uh, well, the finding of the cross of Saint uh, Santa Elena, no? So this is a ritual that is devoted to, as a, a form of devotion to S S Saint Helene, no? to the cross, and it is actually not only dance, it's actually a ritual complete with the uh, mythical basis, it's a uh, music, uh, chanting, because in our traditional communities, art is not separate, it's not divorced from ritual. The home of the late national artist for dance, Ramon Arevalo Obusan, is a repository of his archives, his documentation and notation of dances collected from the field his vast collection of textiles and costumes and artifacts. Recently, as specified in his will, the Ramon Obusan Foundation has opened the house and the collections to scholars and researchers as Ang Bahay ni Kuya. But the house has always been open to dance enthusiasts and students generations who have imbibed the late national artist's love for all things Filipino. Here, where the members of the company 
carry on the tradition of teaching, it is not only dance that is learned, from the Manupo greeting that is mandatory for all who enter, to learning the dances with bare feet so as to be closer to the earth, to the Bayanian spirit that animates all productions. The Obusan experience is one where the best values of our culture are nurtured and ingrained in young Filipinos. One, two. Dulce Obusan, who took over the company's management after her brother passed away in 2006, talks about the legacy of her brother and his consuming passion. He was a maverick. He did things that not a lot of people did in their time. Um, he was a dreamer. He was exceptional in what he did. His biggest legacy is, is what you see. Anytime you see a dance performed that was researched by him, choreographed by him, it's the brand. Anytime you uh, witness any of the performances of the other groups that try to mirror what we do, you know, that's his legacy. Education, just raising the awareness of the kids. Not, e not, not even just the kids. I guess everybody, it, it's a nice, nice way to speak of what we're trying to do. That is to make sure that our traditions just don't go by the wayside. Teaching the research and passing it on to a new generation of interpreters is a job that Obusan's protégés, his most loyal students, take very seriously. The work is, after all, more than just a methodology. It was a lifetime of experience learned firsthand from a master. Number one is discipline in terms of time. You have to know when to come on, on time. You know, number one training sa amin ni Kuya Mon that he really passed on. He calls for a rehearsal ng 9 o'clock. Dapat makarating ka bago mag 9 Second, discipline also sa pag sa sarili mong gamit. Uh, it's not just the dancing that he taught us. It's the preparation that matters sa kanya more than anything. The process that he does uh, does not only limit you to become a dancer. Uh, slowly nagiging costume mistress ka. Nobody's indispensable. Kahit pa soloista ka, star dancer ka, if you consider yourself one, kung member ka ng core ng dance. Pero if you make a mistake o na, na meron kang nagawang foul during training or on or before uh, the performance, talagang papalitan ka niya. Wala siyang pinipili. So, everybody has to stand by. Everybody has to learn their position sa sayaw. Everybody should learn the dance para in, just in case na may papalitan, somebody would always be ready. Isa sa mga lessons na nakuha ko sa kanya is yung love your own, yung talagang pag Pilipino ka, yung dapat yung correct yung pagkakakilala mo doon sa not just as collective na Filipino but yung mga tribo. Ano siya, is part of the training na hindi lang dance talaga yung mga tribo, yung mga from the north to down to south talagang Ah, may mga ano pala sila, differences kahit na collective na at Filipino. So, kilala mo na sila the way yung isa-isa po nilang line. Pero then, saka makikilala mo talaga the whole, yung pagiging Pilipino mo po. We have a very rich history of traditions. Our culture is so diverse. Nowhere else around the region has a culture as beautiful as ours and that's our job it's it's it was kuya's job to make sure na hindi mawala uh, hindi makalimutan
How does a company adapt a traditional ritual or dance meant for a ritual space or village square and transform it for stage for an audience that wants not to be as involved but entertained and educated? In translating a dance into a showpiece, how does a company create a brand that represents not just the indigenous and the folk, but the entire Philippines? Francisca Pirona Benitez, the mother of Tita Helen thought that there should be a real center that would go into full research. And therefore, the following year, the Bayanihan Folk Arts Center was established with its own board. So they went into full research to find out more about Filipino heritage. In 1958, they wanted to bring Filipino representation to the Brussels World's Fair. So, Tita Helen at that time met with a lot of um, uh, civic leaders and politicians to find out. She said that maybe the best way, and not as costly, is to bring these young people to represent the Philippines. Because there were talks about bringing jewels, the gold jewels, and so many things. So, that was the international debut of Bayanihan at the Brussels World's Fair. This was now called Bayanihan Dance Group. And it uh, was really comprised by Filipino students, PWU students, both from PWU in Davao, because there's a Philippine Women's College in Davao, and PWU Manila. And they started to enjoy promoting Bayanihan. Aristocrat empresario Sol Hurok heard about the dance company and invited the company to go to the U.S. And that was the entry of Bayanihan to Broadway. So in 1959, October 13, Bayanihan performed at the Winter Garden and Broadway and got all these fantastic reviews. Vincono il premio Tempio d'Oro 2015, Le Now, with this new generation of directors, when we came in, we somehow did not stick to that kind of programming. We have our own idea of how we will present the Filipino program in a totally different manner, still keeping the essence of folk as started by the pioneers. In terms of technique, I think um, Bayanin has retained the way it should be except that you know it's the generation that changed unlike before all is pakyuti cutie you know when you dance and all that and then when i took over i noticed something you know that now generations totally different especially the millennials they don't like they, they're easily bored with what they're doing so they love excitement and something which is very daring and thrilling in, in terms of dancing Before, it used to be male and female dancing together. So I have observed that if uh, a dance is performed by a boy and a girl, the dance tends to be soft. And you know, uh, the boys are like secondary, something like that. So I thought of coming out with dances with all boys, uh, taking, away, taking away the girls' part and to make it stronger. 
I started with mga martial arts and also like maglarating. It make uh, I made it more brisk and more staccato. And like before that, you know, it, it goes so I took away the soft part, all very, very, very strong and brisky movement. So we've had 14 major world tours and uh, more than, uh, wow, hundreds and hundreds of short tours. And then we have covered six continents, 77 cities. Um, beautiful experience in Bayanihan. And um, I think a lot of us then joined because we love to dance. And suddenly we realized that we were bringing with us something that was so beautiful because suddenly you see standing ovations and the acceptance of so many people. In Diliman, the UP Filipiniana Dance Group continues a long history of teaching and performing with students. The Diliman campus grounds often provide dramatic backdrops for both rehearsal and performance. The youthful spirit of the company belies its history. The UP Filipiniana Dance Group is the oldest of the dance companies featured here. Its young artistic director traces the company's growth. The Filipina Dance Group was um, founded in 1935 by the first Philippine national artist for dance, uh, Francisca, Professor Francisca Reyes Aquino. And then after that, nagkaroon po kami ng mga seven more artistic directors from the, from the college, uh, si uh, Professor Bendia, Zafra, Agsalud, and many more, including po si uh, Professor Corazon Inigo. Um, during her time, she was able to bring the Filipiniana to the world sa iba't ibang um, competitions and festivals and dun po nakilala ng uh, lubos yung Filipiniana. Filipiniana is a uh, varsity group. So we are um, also called student athletes, but of course we would we'd like to uh, call ourselves student artists. Uh, these dancers, they are um, under contract to serve the university as dancers, as folk dancers and um, also jazz dancers kasi yun yung ino-augment namin sa aming folk dance. So in an academic setting, uh, varsity po sila. So kung ano yung basketball varsity, ganun din yung responsibility ng Filipiniana. Gina-juggle nila yun. They work every day uh, for three to five hours na training and they have academics in the morning. When they get to the to Filipiniana, ang hinahanap lang naman po namin ay uh, syempre marunong sumayaw, may background ng konti, madaling turuan, may disiplina. Um, yung height tsaka yung body type, wala naman kaming uh, pinipili as long as makapag-work kami with them and, and um, hindi, naman, hindi naman sila naiiba sa the rest of the people in the group. No? So um, also, as long as they can cope with the academic uh, yung rigors ng uh, academics dito sa UP. In my directorship kasi, I want to be uh, collaborative since hindi naman, I can, hindi ko naman maaako na, na expert ako sa Philippine folk dance. So I have alumni, I have um, friends in the uh, community who come and help teach. Um, they also impart uh, different um, knowledge from, from their own learnings and that's how we create a um, multifaceted individual when it comes to uh, Philippine folk dancing. The dance story of Ligaya Amil Bangsa is essentially a love story. A love story that spans almost half a century. 
a love story that continues today even without a formal dance company. In 1969, I attended a big wedding in Olosulu, and I saw this lady, uh, this young woman, uh, perform pangalay. I was mesmerized. It was really different from, from what we call pangalay in Luzon, the ones that I, I sometimes see in cultural presentations in Manila. So sinuous, uh, what is this? Uh, very elegant. No attitude problem, like <laughs> no attitude problem. When I was invited to teach uh, the Sulu College of Technology and Oceanography in 1972, I was able to study Pangalai like in depth. I said, I have to learn this dance. Because I told my husband, in 50 years, if I don't learn this dance and document it, it will be lost. And true enough, it may not even reach 25 years and the dance is already so much watered down. Much post many postures and gestures have been almost forgotten. It's only now when we perform that they call, oh yes, yes, my grandmother or my auntie or my mother used to do that movement, see? So, so I, I really studied it and documented it. And I was able to write a book about these dances after 13 years, 10 years of studying it, so that I can learn it, or how do you call that, proprioception, so that it can be memorized by my muscles, so I can perform it well enough that I can teach it. I had to learn from the natives themselves, because there's no formal method of instruction. I was the one who developed the formal method of instruction after so many years of, of studying. I think this is one solution uh, to, to make it as authentic as possible. But of course, it's already really out of the context of the community. But still, you need to show the communal context. Parang buhay Pinoy, how, how does the Filipino live in this part? No? So this is the aim of uh, Emilia Milbansa. And also, UP Filipina, to a certain extent, tries to contextualize the dances. Um, Ramon Busan is very contextual when it comes to the to the costuming. I would like to, well, um, appreciate the attempts of all these dance uh, groups like Bayanihan, Ramon Busan, Yupi Filipiniana, and um, the, the one of Legaya Melbangsa, in trying to, well, show who we are as a people in as faithful a manner as possible. Although they don't really, um, many of them, especially Bayanihan, don't, don't, don't really claim that the dances are that authentic. That's why I said, uh, they, are, they, they are contemporary interpretations of our folk dances. How wonderful it would be if all Filipinos could, at one point in their lives, be a part of a folk dance troupe and think of what could be imbibed, the discipline, the grace, the community and theme spirit, the appreciation for a rich culture. Think of the fun of communing, of learning to move as a group, of doing one's part towards the achievement of a common goal. Maybe not everyone will be perfect, including me or most graceful dancer, but surely any young Filipino would come out of a folk dance group would be a better, more conscientious Filipino. After all, if we can learn to dance as one, maybe the idea of a nation united and attuned towards a common goal may soon be a reality. In every movement, in every dream, a reflection of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. Thank <laughs> you.